what happens is if you have an intelligence explosion? What if you create an artificial intelligence that can bootstrap itself into uh, really high levels of intelligence, godlike levels? In fact, some of the people who are working on this say, think about a, a super intelligent AI the same way as it would be in, uh, stand in the same relation to us as we stand in relation to a beetle. This is a good ask of We Are Change.org. I'm here with Ron Bailey of Reason Magazine. His expertise is in technology and robotics and many others, of course. You've also written many books. Um, and Ron, I have a question. Um, with technology advancing so much as it is right now, where do you see kind of the jobs, the economics of everything moving forwards? Well, this has always been a concern in uh, past history. As you know, there was a Luddite movement back in the early part of the 19th century when better weaving frames were invented and people's jobs disappeared who had been weavers, uh, craft weavers, and they re rebelled against that and would break the frames. So the question is, they were afraid they would have no jobs. Well, it turned out, of course, what you do is you create more productivity with more machines over time, and it frees up people to do other kinds of jobs. Usually better jobs, not jobs that are, are routine and so forth, more, more using human intelligence and social capacities. It's always, it's always hard to, to imagine what the new jobs are. For example, think about it right now. You're doing an interview by yourself without a camera crew, with a tiny camera. I used to be a television producer 30 years ago. I'd have to have at least five people doing what you are doing by yourself yourself right now. So new jobs have come out and there's been a proliferation of video all around the world and greater communication. There are more people like you out there doing this kind of thing because the technology has enabled it. I think that this is what will happen in the future. Whatever the new jobs are going to be, we can't imagine them now, yeah. but they are going to occur most likely. A lot of people have that fear that technology will get rid of all jobs and kind of replace everything. And I remember you saying something in your speech about that there'll be no more waiters around in, in just a few years. Um, and, and with this advancement, um, do you think technology has a way of replacing all jobs or do you think uh, this kind of migration will happen naturally, progressively and uh, in a way where everything works out like an equilibrium? I, I think that what you're going to find is, let's go back to the waiter thing, is, is that what, what's going to happen is, is that right now, I, used, I actually used to be a waiter. I mean, my first job out of college was to be a waiter. And uh, it's a very good entry-level job. I, was, I have to say I, I got out of college during the Carter recession, so, you know, I didn't get to use my college degree for a while. But anyway, so what happens is, is that that was an entry-level job. And what, if, you, if you start mechanizing that, if you start industrializing that, then that entry level will, be, will go away. So what else will people do? I, I, again, I think what you'll find is, is the people who can interact with machines, uh, both computers and other kind of mechanized machines, they will become complements to those machines. So what you'll have is, is perhaps a proliferation of, of more kinds of things that people or services they'll be able to offer. For instead of waiting on you at, at, at a restaurant, what might happen actually is that a person will come to your home and cook a meal. That's already happening. Mm -hmm. And so what you're going to have are more of this kind of proliferation of choices out there, and there'll be more niches for people to go to. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think that the jobs are going to disappear. There is a possibility at some point that we create a sufficiently uh, autonomous system of, of production that scarcity goes away, mm -hmm. and at which point we all go to the beach. <laughs> That sounds like a very interesting, fascinating trend that we're all kind of moving towards very rapidly, very fast. Uh, but also the topic that I'm really curious about is singularity. What is your take on singularity? Where, do, you, do you think it's possible? Where do you see it going? Like, is it good? Is it bad? What do you think? Okay. The singularity is this, is this metaphor, basically, where what happens is if you have an intelligence explosion, what if you create an artificial intelligence that can bootstrap itself into uh, really high levels of intelligence, godlike levels. In fact, some of the people who are working on this say, think about a, a super intelligent AI the same way as it would be in, uh, stand in the same relation to us as we stand in relation to a beetle now. It would be that smart. It would be a god in a box, as it were. And what, what would we do about that? What, uh, is that a danger? And it is a danger, because when we create it, it'll have its own set of values, possibly. And will, we, will that superintelligence want to keep us around? It may not even be malevolent. It may be basically decide that it has other goals, and we just happen to be in the way. So you have to be very careful when you create it. And there are people who are thinking very deeply about this issue, but there are no obvious solutions at this yeah. point. And so we should be careful when we're uh, doing this kind of research. 
but again, we're not going to stop the research. We just have to go forward and, 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 be, and take the steps that we can to keep maintain control over the superintelligence. If it turns out to be uh, friendly to human beings, that kind of thing could usher in a veritable utopia. I mean, basically, uh, all scientific problems could be solved, all scarcity problems could be solved, and human beings uh, might even be immortal. That sounds like an incredibly fascinating just future in technology that is just so rapidly changing. My last question is, uh, with these advancements, advancements in technology, are you optimistic or pessimistic about the future? I'm incredibly optimistic. I think things are going to be a lot better. I have a, a new book coming out, if I may. Yeah, of course. It has the title, The End of Doom. I don't think you could be more optimistic than that. And basically the subtitle is Environmental Renewal in the 21st Century. And largely because human ingenuity is going to uh, reduce humanity's footprint on the planet. We're going to be using less material, getting more value out of it, for example. The population uh, will, uh, on planet Earth will, will peak sometime in this century and start declining. And we'll basically uh, see the regreening of the world. And many people also view that we're overpopulated and that we're denying resources, but there's a lot of counter evidence to that as well. I don't know if you want to get into all that as well, but um, if you could just give me your take on overpopulation really quickly and tell us where more people could find out more information about you. Okay, uh, overpopulation is, oh, there's no such thing, but people are confusing overpopulation with poverty. And what, what happens is, is that what you want is, can I ask it this way? Yeah. Think about uh, the following question. This is a wonderful question that uh, a friend of mine, Ramez Naim, came up with, where he basically said, uh, would you be better off if half of the people who'd ever lived didn't live? And you don't get to pick them. And if you think about it at all, the answer is no, because you wouldn't necessarily have your Shakespeare's, your Einstein's, your Bill Gates, or whoever. They might not have appeared, and you wouldn't have had the wonderful uh, productivity you've had, the, the invention of medicines, and whatever. And so what you have to think about is each individual person, if you give them the tools, uh, the education, uh, the, the rule of law, each individual person is an idea creator. And an idea creator, they create more for us, each one of us. So I think that we don't, shouldn't think about it that way. What we should think about is figuring out how to give people choices over their lives. And when we do that, we find that, mo and women most particularly, we find that they have fewer children because they decide to spend their time in other ways. And so I, and I think that that's the future we're going to have, more choices, fewer children, and a cleaner, better planet. Um, very well said. And where can people find out more about you? Uh, I'm the science correspondent at Reason Magazine, and my uh, book will be out in July, The End of Doom. Thank you. Ron, really appreciate all your expertise and knowledge that you've just given us. Thank you. Thank you. told uh, the U.S. Senate that you didn't believe in those beliefs. Now you're telling me that they are not existent? We're just, but sir, really quickly. If that uh, would revolutionize everything, get rid of oil, get rid of gas combustion cars, and it was shelved. ¿Cuál es la noticia? <laughs> where, where are the news? 